Hey everyone, as you can see, I have two SanDisk Extreme Pro micro SD cards. I have the 128 gigabyte versions, which should be enough for recording with my action cameras. Before, I was using this Samsung one, Samsung Evo, and my GoPro. But the SanDisk Extreme Pro is regarded as one of the best cards you can get for 4K recording. And I do want to record in 4K from time to time in my action cameras which is why I bought this. Now, these aren't cheap. There's a lot of cheaper alternatives out there. In the UK, these are about £35 each in the UK. That's why I paid. I paid about £70 for both. In the USA, you're talking about $37 or so, so a little bit cheaper in the USA. As I said, if you're not doing 4K recording, you can find cheaper alternatives. Now, I am familiar with this already because I use the, the full SD card, the Extreme Pro version, on my Canon M50. And I bought it for the same reason, for 4K recording. And um, in this particular one, I did a performance test with this before, and I was incredibly impressed because I was getting read and write speeds of about 80 to 90 megabytes per second. As you can see here, they're quoting read speeds up to 170 megabytes per second and write speeds up to 90 megabytes per second. So there is the SanDisk Extreme Pro. That's what your money gets you. This tiny little micro SD card. So what I would like to do at this point is put this into my laptop via the, the provided adapter and put it into my PC via a USB hub and test the read and write performance using a few different free applications, which I will link to below if you want to use them yourself. I'll then do some mobile tests as well. Uh, just to see how this performs on your in your mobile phone. It's perhaps overkill buying a card like this for your mobile phone, but 4K recording is becoming more common in top-of-the-range smartphones. So maybe you will get better recording performance, better 4K recordings if you do jump up to a card like this. But um, let's see. So I've tested the SanDisk Extreme Pro micro SD card in my laptop and in my PC using this USB 3.0 hub. And in my laptop, obviously, I used the SD card slot. And I used two applications to test it. I used H2 Test W and Crystal Disk Mark. Both of these applications are free to download, so check the description area. You'll see a link to both of these if you want to use them yourself. On H2 Test W on my laptop, I was getting a read speed of 82 and a write speed of 77. When I put it into the PC using the same test, I got a read speed of 86.4 and a write speed of 80.6. And if you look at the quoted speeds here, they're saying up to 170 megabytes per second for reading, but you know I'm not getting anywhere close to that. But for the write speed, which is arguably more important, especially when recording, for 4K recording, you, you really want to get over 60 megabytes per second, and I'm getting about 77 and 80.6 according to H2 Test W. On Crystal Disk Mark, I was getting, uh, on the laptop, I was getting 86.27 megabytes per second and a write speed of 75.81. So that's a little bit lower on Crystal Disk Mark, 75, 76. Um, on the PC, the read speed was 91.81. Again, that's lower than the quoted 170 megabytes per second, but I was getting a write speed of 82.6. Across the board, yes, the read speeds were lower than what's been quoted, but the write speed, which is very important for 4K recording, that is the important thing, and you know I'm very, very pleased with it. The card is currently inside my phone, and you can see I've just done a benchmark with A1SD Bench, and I'm getting a read speed of 81.05, and a write speed of 55.5. Now that's not as good as what you get in your laptop or your PC. What I'd like to do at this point is move from A1SD Bench and load up Android Bench and we'll see how I got on with this one. So I've got the benchmark here from Android Bench. I don't normally use this one, but it's been recommended by a lot of people, so I always like to include it. And you can see the sequential read at the top of 719, sequential write of 179.29, the random read of 130.32, and a random write of 22.03. And then you've got SQL benchmarks down the bottom. Now, I don't think you can interpret the results in the same way as you can with H2 Test W and Crystal Disk Mark and A1 S2 Bench, uh, SD Bench, sorry. 
I think these results are a little bit different and you have to interpret them a different way. But if you use Anjo Bench, then hopefully these results will be relevant to you. I hope you've all enjoyed this performance test of the SanDisk Extreme Pro. This is without doubt the fastest micro SD card in my collection. It's faster than the non-pro version, that's the SanDisk Extreme, and it's faster than the other Samsung cards and other cards that I've got like Toshiba etc. This is the fastest card that I've got and it's ideal for what I bought it for, for recording with my GoPros and my Sony action cameras. What really surprised me as well was that this performs almost identically to the, the full SD card version. So this is the one that I use in my Canon M50 and the speeds are very similar. So that to me is quite impressive. This card is quite expensive. It's not the most expensive card in the market, but you can find 120 gigabyte cards at less than half the cost. But when you're recording 4K, you do have to get write speeds at a certain level and certain action cameras and other cameras will tell you that they can't record because your micro SD card isn't fast enough. So if a camera requires 50 or 60 megabytes per second for writing and your card can't cut it, then you're not going to be able to record. So sometimes it is worth stepping up if you do need to record 4K. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, do please leave a comment below. And until next time, take care.